What is up everyone, my name's Joe and welcome to my channel. Today we are checking out the new Hexel plugin from ADSR. So the Hexel plugin from ADSR is what they call a harmonic table-based generative MIDI sequencer. That's a mouthful, but it sounds exciting. They say it creates fresh patterns that evolve in surprising ways based on user input. It's based around what they call the harmonic table. The harmonic table note layout or tonal array puts all the notes of the major and minor triads at your fingertips. It offers a highly visual, easy to use and supremely creative interface for melodic composition. So I bought this uh, at the weekend because for ages I've been searching for some kind of arpeggiator or MIDI sequencer that randomly generates MIDI sequences that change notes, velocity, and timing. I've wanted something like this for loads of different applications, really, but mainly for creating pads and layers in piano compositions of randomly generated arpeggios. Now, the Logic Arpeggiator works well, but it doesn't have any kind of random timing-based, I guess, algorithms. And so when I saw this, I was really excited by it because I wondered if this could be what I was looking for. So I picked it up immediately and thought it would be good to make a video on it. I, I have opened it up just to make sure that it all installed correctly. And it seems cool. So apart from that, I haven't touched it. So we'll get into that in a second and have a good play around with it. Um, but first, I want to sort of explain how it works. So let's load up Logic and show you. So we're over in Logic now, and I've loaded up this Steinway Walnut Grand Piano from um, Imperfect Samples. They create really beautiful, natural sounding pianos and VSTs, so you should go and check them out if you haven't. Um, now, you might think you would put it on your effects chain like a normal plugin, but you actually don't. As you can see, there's nothing from ADSR in this list. Where you need to go is, in Logic at least, I don't know about other DAWs, but I'm sure there's somewhere. You go to the MIDI effects, and this is where you'd find the normal uh, Logic arpeggiator. But instead of loading that, we're gonna go to Audio Units, ADSR, and load the Hexel. So this is their interface. This sort of, um, I don't know, it reminds me of like uh, Honeycomb layout. And as you can see, each one has got a different note on. By itself, it does nothing. But then you have these tools that they call them. Um, and these are what sort of create the MIDI information to trigger the MIDI sounds. So they've got an emitter. Um, patterns are driven by emitters. Each emitter generates up to six active nodes which travel in a straight line across the harmonic table. Cells containing an active node are highlighted. So you can put one of these anywhere. Depending on what you've set here, I've got the bar sequence the sequence length to one bar. So that means every time it hits a bar, it's gonna generate something from the emitter. As you can see, it highlights the notes as they're sent out from the emitter. You get these black lines around the outside of the emitter that you can activate or deactivate, and then it will send or not send a note from those. So black means activated. And as you can see, it's sending out those notes. Next, we have a MIDI note. Each hexagonal cell represents a note that can be selected to form a part of a MIDI pattern. Active nodes that enter the selected cell will trigger the note displayed. So at the moment our emitter is sending out on all axes. So I can go and say, let's put a MIDI note there. And as you can see, each time one of the um, emitter nodes hits the MIDI note, it triggers the sound. So I could put one there. Or there, oops. You get the idea. Next, we have reverse. Active nodes that collide with a reverse will start moving in the opposite direction. So very simply, if I put a reverse here, the node will come out, hit this, and then get sent back. So if I get rid of that, 
It's getting sent out the bottom, hitting the C, being reversed, hitting the C again, passing back through and hitting the F sharp. Pretty self-explanatory. Redirect. Active nodes that enter a redirect will change direction at random. You may select which directions can be chosen at random using the buttons along the outer rim of the redirect. So this is like a emitter in that it sends things in a direction, but it doesn't generate a note. It will just redirect exi existing notes. So you can see there it's getting sent off. Let's get rid of this guy. So you can see it's just like bouncing it off in a random direction. Then we have stop. Active nodes that collide with the stop will cease to exist. Just like my hopes and dreams. So you can see there, if you put it before the C, it's going to stop it from reaching the C. And then you've got the reset tool, which you can just redirect, uh, reset stuff. So that's how it works. You've then got this settings bit here, and that will change um, the sort of global settings of the whole thing. So note length is, they're all, they're all very self-explanatory. Note length is what it says. The sequence length is how often it will trigger the emitter, I believe. So this speed is the speed at which these sort of nodes cross the harmonic table. Uh, transpose, I imagine, will... Oh, okay. So it doesn't... Tr mm. So it transposes the entire harmonic table. Interesting. Velocity variation is like humanizing. So that's pretty much the overview of the plugin. You also get a bunch of presets here. So let's just go in and put a bunch of stuff in and see what sort of patterns we can come up with. I'm going to turn on the sustain pedal so we get a bit of length on our note. Uh, let's put an emitter on the C because C is safety. Let's, I don't know. Why is, oh wow, that was anticlimactic. Okay, that sounds nice. So I guess where this might come into play is using multiple emitters, perhaps. That's nice. Okay, so it's very, well, it's very interesting. It's causing me to think about things in a different way. It's definitely great for creating lots of unique sort of rhythms and note sequences. Let's have a look at some of these. If you know anything about ADSR, they're a very sort of synth-driven company. So using a piano might not be the best example. So after we've messed around with this a bit, we can move on to a synth and see how that sounds. So using the transpose there, you can shift the whole thing. Uh, which is a cool sort of trick. I don't know about you, but I want to hear a kick under all these. Okay, these are all very synthy sounding, and the piano sounds weird. So let's switch to... I mean, it's got to be Serum, hasn't it? Give me some kind of crazy shit. Maybe not that crazy. It's really interesting. I feel like it's got a lot of potential, but it's not quite clicking with my brain. I think it's so dependent on the sound you're triggering. With some, it just sounds completely inappropriate, but then with some, it sounds really cool. I'm now gonna go and mess around with it to see if I can come up with some kind of short, cool composition using it in uh, different applications. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just been messing around with it for about 15 minutes, and I think I've come up with something kind of cool. It's all synth-based, like EDME kind of thing. Uh, let's take a listen, then I'll show you what I did with the plugin.
Cool. So that's just a very quick idea I whacked together. And as you can see, the only plugin I've got going on apart from the Hexel is an uh, Xfers LFO tool, which I've got to like create a ghost side chaining effect on the sub base. This is one of the patterns that I noted that I liked when I was walking through the presets. So that's kind of like the upper foundation of this whole little track. Can't really call it a track, let's be honest. But that's carrying throughout. And then on this uh, lead synth, I came up with these notes to begin with. This sort of sequence. Pretty standard, nice little thing, but I wanted some like higher octave little sparkly details going on, and that's where I use the Hexel. Um, and I put this in manually, so this wasn't a preset, because I wanted to make sure I was hitting the right notes um, for the scale I was using, which I just worked out like on the keyboard. Yeah, I wanted to be able to control just how many were triggering the right kind of notes and the right octaves. So that solo is triggering. Right, so just some nice details going on and together it provides a nice sort of sparkly uh, yeah, detail in the upper range. Because this is just triggering itself in the background, you can then go and lay in notes under it, which is what I did. You can just hear it going on in the top there. And then lastly, I used it on the drums, uh, which for, uh, for this, I'm just using battery four to trigger some good sort of like EDM-y samples. But if we take a look, you can see the only thing I've actually written in is the kick drum. And you can hear some other sort of percussion-y bits going on, like we've got a hi-hat and other stuff. And that's all been triggered by this. And I just went through the presets until I found one that was sort of sounding right. And then I had to take out some samples on battery four. You can see there's some blank ones. I just yeet it out of there. Um, because they were like ramps or something and sounded weird. So that's another cool way you could use it to kind of add um, rhythmic uh, drums or percussion rhythms over um, very simple MIDI programming. So now I've had a play with it, I'll sort of review my thoughts on it. Um, I think it's a really cool tool to make you think of using MIDI in a different way. I haven't encountered something like this before. I guess it's... I don't know if I'd call it an arpeggiator. They don't. Um, so I kind of put that word to it. And I don't think it is one. It's definitely a sort of MIDI triggering... Um, well, what they say, basically. Their description's spot on. There are a couple of things I think would be cool to see added. A way to shift the pattern of the notes like could we get it in like a grid instead of these sort of the sort of honeycomb shape it'd be cool to maybe be able to switch the actual shape of the nodes i'm pretty sure you can't i'm really sorry if i've got that wrong it'd be cool if there was some way to like change how the notes are laid out so in like how the notes repeat on the different um axes you can trigger or send notes on it'd be cool if there was a way you could randomize it somehow so like each time the sequence length changes the way the emitter sends notes out we could change that but i guess that's really the redirect tool i don't know i feel like i want a bit more customization and random organic generation perhaps is a good way to put it it seems like such a powerful tool to be able to create really rhythmic and unique evolving ideas but just from the amount of time I played with it, which admittedly wasn't very long. You know, I've only been doing this video for like an hour or so. It, you do sort of, the rhythms do repeat 
themselves. And I think it would be awesome if there was some way to like change over time where things sit. I'd love to see some kind of change where you could automate note positions or something or where things are active and where they aren't. But yeah, I think it's a really cool creative tool that will just make you think about things differently. And it's really cheap, by the way. I think I got it for like 20 quid. So if you're into kind of throwing yourself in with new creative tools that you might not have used before and seeing how they work and seeing if they come up with any creative ideas that you hadn't come up with before, I definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's a really cool idea and I'm going to be using it in the future for sure. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that was a cool little demo of this Hexel plugin by ADSR. Um, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It obviously really helps. And I will see you next week for another video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.